Hey there, welcome back, this is Jana. So today I wanna to talk about darning or mending your hand-knit socks. After you've spent hours and hours knitting a pair of handmade socks, then you wear them for a year or two and they start to wear holes. Well, it's definitely worth patching them rather than just throwing them out because you spend a lot of work and most of the time, hand-knitted socks last a lot longer than store-bought and they're definitely worth taking care of and taking the time to do the mending. <music> So I have several pair here that I've kind of put it off and I haven't haven't done it. So I've got one here that has a hole. I tend to wear holes kind of in the ball of my foot area. I have several pair that need to be mended. Either there's a hole right there in that one. Um, I have one here that has a hole in the toe. This one's been hanging around for a long time and it needs to be mended. So that, that's one compelling reason to save your tidbits, save your leftovers. If you have some sock yarn left over from that pair, hang on to it. And while I know that it's tempted to knit the little mitered square blanket or whatever other little projects, that's fine, do that. But save a couple yards back for that pair for mending if you can. Like I've got a plastic bin just dedicated to scraps. And while there's a couple of pairs of socks that I have that were either given to me or I knitted them and I made maybe I made them from the toe up and I used every last bit of yarn I had, maybe I don't have them anymore. I might not have the tidbit anymore. And that is the case with this one. And so I'm gonna use this sock to show you how to, how to mend that patch, or sorry, make a patch to mend this hole right here. And I'm just gonna use some solid black, but, and hopefully that will show up pretty well on screen. And if it, or maybe I'll use a little of this blue, that might work better. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna use this contrasting color just because I want you to be able to see the tutorial. So here's an example of one that I did earlier. And I didn't have any more of this variegated, nor did I take the time to, you know, like, even if I would have, I don't think I would have taken the time to try to match up the stripes and make it seamless because this sock has been with me for probably six or seven years. And at this point, it's at the bottom of the foot. I just want this thing to be functional. I just want to wear it again in my farm boots and be warm in the winter. So it's fine. I don't, I don't care. So I, I did have some of the contrasting toe color left that I used to knit this patch. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Now, there are some other techniques. There are three or four different techniques for mending your socks. What I'm gonna show you today is actually a knitted patch. So you can see that that's actually knitted on there. And this is a good way to do it because it's firmer and because unlike the, you may have seen tutorials or seen other techniques that, that kind of, you build a frame and it kind of weaves, you just do strands almost like on a loom and you weave in and out. There's nothing wrong with that, but I find this to be more durable then I could weave something. So what you're gonna need is a wool tapestry or a darning needle. Um, you're gonna need some of your scrap yarn, like whatever color you're gonna use. You need a couple of double point needles. Now hopefully these will be a little bit smaller than what you use to knit the sock with so that it's easy to pick up the stitches and it also creates a firmer patch. So you will need your scrap yarn, a darning needle or tapestry needle that's relatively small as well. You don't want one of those big old honking ones. And then you want um, some s finer double pointed needles. The other thing that's really handy to have is a darning egg. Now this one is really old. I've had this one for a really, really long time. It was my grandmother's. You can buy plain wooden ones. I think Nitpicks might have them. I'll put some links down below to where I found some wooden ones. You could also just use a piece of cardboard in there. When you're picking up the stitches, you don't want to inadvertently pick up both sides and then, you know, accidentally sew the top and the bottom of your sock together. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can also just put your hand in there, but I, I do find it helpful a couple of, at a couple of different points that I'll show you to use the darning egg. Um, a lot of people use a light bulb, like one of the old kind of, I wouldn't suggest that because if that thing shatters accidentally, that's bad. I don't think I would do that. Um, so piece of cardboard might work or go find yourself an egg, a plastic Easter egg would work great. So try that. All right, let's get started. Okay. The first thing I want to do here is put in my darning egg into the sock so I can try to get a sense of, of how big this hole really is. And it all, you know, it just provides me with some surface tension so I can see really what's going on here. And I want to kind of take notice of how many rows down I want to start my patch because you want to make your patch a little bigger than the hole 
obviously, so it's secure. And you have some um, concrete, strong stitching to anchor your patch to all the way around. So then you wanna measure off, I don't know, a yard, maybe nine or 10 feet. I, I don't like running out, so I'd rather have a little extra and make sure that it's not tangled. And then go ahead and thread. This is the smallest size of darning needle that I have that comes in a, usually they come in a three pack. And mine is a Chibi, I think is what it's called. Let me get that out and show you here. Um, I've had this one for years, but I'll put a link down below where you can find it. The, I have a bunch of other stuffed needles in here too, but usually they come in a three pack. This is the small size. So all I'm gonna do here, I'm not tying a knot or anything, I've just threaded this on and then I'm just untangling, making sure all of my extra is untangled. So all I'm gonna do here to start with, to get started is I'm gonna take this and just poke it in somewhere down below, several inches below and off to the side, just to keep the tail out of the way. Then I'm gonna come up here, a couple of rows to the right of the rightmost edge of the hole, and then also a couple of rows down. So I'm gonna aim for this blue stripe a couple of rows to the right of the hole. So I'm gonna take and follow this column, kind of follow this column with my eyes down, and I'm gonna aim for a spot, oh, that's probably pretty good right there. I'm gonna aim for a spot and just come right up in there, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. And I know that this yarn doesn't exactly match, but I wanted it to be contrasting for the purpose of this video. And also, it's, just, it's what I have. And I'm not super picky about whether it matches or it doesn't. Um, so I'm just gonna leave a couple inches here because I, I don't wanna have to worry about accidentally pulling it through. So go ahead and just set this down here for a moment. Then I'm gonna take my, I'm using size zeros or 2.0 millimeter double pointed needles here. You'll just need two. And I'm going to go in into the right leg of a stitch right here next to where I came up. So I'm, I'm and the reason I like having the darning egg is because you can poke that right double pointed needle in there and just really dig out the right leg of that stitch. So then I'm gonna continue going into the right leg of the next knit stitch and I'm picking those up as I go across to the left. Picking up an all, I mean, I guess you could do the left one. It probably doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm just ma making sure that I stay on that same row until I get to a column that I've kind of pre-chosen on the left side of the hole and that's where I'm gonna stop. This might be 10 stitches. It could be 12, 14. It doesn't really matter how many that it is, of course, you know, being a little OCD, I like the even numbers, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. As long as you pick up enough stitches to where you're gonna be on a couple columns past the right, or sorry, the left edge of your hole. So let's count and see how many stitches I've got here. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Oh, I can't have that. I'm gonna have to do an even 10. <laughs> you could totally stop at nine if you want to or however many works for you. All right, so that should be 10 stitches. Now, if I didn't wanna pick up that one, I could have picked up an extra on this side, but I think that 10 stitches is gonna be just fine. Okay, now I'm gonna push my double pointed needle all the way through. Now what I'm gonna do is simply begin to knit. I'm gonna slip the first stitch as if to purl, and I'm just gonna knit my way across. So it's gonna be easier for me to do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take my darning egg out. I dropped that out. We will probably use it. We'll use it again later, but I'm going to set that down to create some flexibility so I can bend this down. Then I'm going to take my other double pointed needle. Now this first stitch you want to be careful with a little bit just because, you know, your tail is loose here. We haven't woven anything in or tacked anything down yet. I'm going to slip the first stitch as if to purl, and then I'm simply going to knit my way across. Okay, just knit across and that, this is gonna be the foundation row of our patch and it's secured into the, a good solid knitted row from our sock. So that's why you wanna go a little bit bigger than your hole. So you have a firm way to begin your patch. So when we get to the other side, we're going to plan on securing this patch to the sides as we knit it, as we knit our square or rectangle, whatever it ends up being. Okay, when we get to the other side, you still have your tail in threaded on here. So that's really convenient. So straighten that out, make sure this isn't tangled. I probably have too much yarn, but that's okay. So now is when you want to be very careful 
I poke my finger in here and I, I want to be really careful not to stitch the two sides of the sock together. That wouldn't be wise. So now I'm going to choose a column to go up and I'm just going to go in with my darning needle making sure that I'm and then back up, you know, crossing over a couple of um, horizontal strands between the columns. And again, I'm going to put my pinky in there and make sure that I'm not accidentally tacking the two sides of my sock together. <laughs> yeah, I probably um, haven't quite enough yarn here, but that's okay. All right, make sure you don't have any knots like I do. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to give that a little tug. Now I'm going to turn my work and we're going to slip the first stitch. Just go ahead and drop this other end now. We're going to slip the first stitch and purl our way back. Okay, slip the first stitch as if to purl. And then simply purl your way back across, just like normal. Okay, purled our way back across. And then we're going to do the same thing we did. Turn your work. So now you're on the, the knit side. Grab your other end where your darning needle is and investigate where we want to come up another couple of rows or a couple of horizontal strands. So I'm going to choose to go in right there. Again, making sure that we're not tacking down anything we don't want to and just come up a, um, a couple of horizontal bars there. Okay. Pull that through. So this is how we're going to go and attach everything along the sides as we knit our way up. So you don't, there's not any sewing later. Okay, give that a good little tug. And again, we're going to purl the first stitch, or sorry, slip the first stitch as if to purl and knit your way across. So really this, the other uh, patch that I did on that other sock, it only took maybe 30 minutes. And I think that's well worth the time to, you know, recover a pair of, of handmade socks that is comfy and keeps you warm. It's well worth the time to, to take to, to fix, you know, to mend these things. Okay, I'm going to show you one more time and then I'll carry on and I'll, I'll show you what we do at the, at the end. All right, so I'm going to choose a spot above here. Go up another strand or two. And then I'll work a few more rows and I'll show you what it looks like when I get to um, you know, the size that I want to cover this hole. I'm definitely going to want to knit enough that it goes above this jaggedy part and maybe even up to where this little dash is. I might even go up that far because this is a little jaggedy here. So I definitely want to go, you know, two or three rows higher than the size of the actual hole. Slip the first stitch as if to purl, purl your way back and continue doing that knitting and purling, tacking it to the side until you get to the desired size of patch to cover your hole. All right, I've knitted and purled back and forth until my patch more than covers the hole. I've gone a couple of rows above. I don't know if you can see, kind of see down in there or not, but I've gone a couple of rows, um, two or three probably above where the, the hole was, tacking down as, as I showed you before. So now I have ended on a knit row on purpose. So do however many rows you need to in order to end on that knit row. Then we're gonna turn our work, take your second double pointed needle. And this is again where I'm going to use the darning egg and we're going to go back and pick up stitches on a row of existing knitting, just like we did before. Okay. So I'm going to put my darning egg back inside and position it such that it creates that back stop for me to press against and pick up those stitches. So I'm going to kind of pull my flap down and choose which row I'm going to anchor to. And I think I'm going to anchor to right where, right where that stitch goes in. And I'm going to pick up again, same as before, I'm going to pick up one leg of each of those stitches, either the right or left. I don't believe it matters a whole lot. Just make sure you go along and you stay on the same row and pick up your 10 stitches across the top or 12 or however many that ends up being for you. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of my darning egg because that's a little cumbersome down inside there now. So done with that. All right, pick up your darning needle again with your tail 
and we're going to Kitchener stitch these and that's how we're going to graft the top of our patch onto here. So I do have another video that shows how to Kitchener stitch without the ears and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Now most of the time there's a setup row in the Kitchener stitch but I certainly don't want an ear so to speak on my patch that I don't want any extra bumps on the bottom of my fit's foot so I am omitting that setup row and right away I'm going to go in my first stitch as if to knit go ahead and slip that right off being careful to only slip off one and then I'm going to purl the neck go in as if to purl on the next and I'm going to leave that one on all right then I'm going to go to the back row and I'm going to purl slip that one off okay being careful not to slip off any more than just that first one and I will knit the second stitch and leave it on so making sure that your loop doesn't get hung up around the front needle just make sure that everything is straight there go back to the front you can remember which to begin with because here you can see the knit stitches so you know you're going to begin with the knit take that off then purl the next then when you go to the the back needle the purl bumps are toward you and so you're going to begin with the purl stitch and then knit the second one and that's the one that you leave on the second one that you do is the one that you leave on until the next time so now I can see the purl bumps so I'm going to go in as if to purl and that's the one I'm going to take off then I'll knit the second one here and leave that one on until I come back to it all right you continue with your Kitchener stitch until you get to the very end I've developed a little mantra that I just I do it I always do it the same way I start with the beginning needle and I go knit off purl and you purl the second one and then the la the back needle is purl off knit so I just say that the whole time knit off purl purl off knit but at the end you don't have that second one to purl so you just skip that and go ahead and go in then we're going to poke this poke this yarn down inside I just give that a good little tug I've grafted that on really well and now I just go in somewhere near the top here and then we're going to turn the sock inside out so but I don't want to uh, again accidentally sew this together so I put my hand up inside there and I poke that needle in I'm going to grab everything and turn it inside out all right and then you can see where how our patch is looking here you can see where we tack that in on each side and this is this is our tail in from before now that closed that hole that closed that off really nicely and all that's going to do now is felt together as you wear it and the caught friction of you wearing that it should just mash right in there and felt that together so that's i would say a successful repair job now all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back underneath where the patch is. Um, you can weave it in out here if you like, but I always am concerned that it'll show lines on the outside if I do that, where I know that if I weave it in carefully on the inside, it's not going to show on the reverse. So I am going to put my hand up inside there though, so I don't inadvertently stitch both sides of my sock together. Huh. So you just want to weave you can tile off a little knot if you want to i'm not because this is the bottom of my foot i don't want to create any little bumps um, so i'm just going to weave this in and then secure it just weave in your ends and you should be good to go all right there's my completed patch on the the side of my foot and i realize it doesn't match exactly but that's all right so that will buy me several more months or even years of wear on this sock and I'm pretty excited about that I'm excited to reclaim the socks that I haven't worn in quite a while because of that hole okay I hope you found that video helpful there's my two repaired socks and I'm going to go find their mates and put them back in my drawer and I'm excited to have uh, two more pairs of socks that have been just kind of languishing and I haven't been wearing them so I'm excited to put them back in service in my sock drawer rotation all right, so as always, if you find these videos helpful, please consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification so you'll be advised when I upload new things. All right, thanks for watching.